All right, so this is the choker. It's the rhinestone choker. I don't know if it shows up better this way. Hmm. And then this. Oh, well, let me get a little bit more water. And I will proceed with what our talk is this evening. It's called... Uh, when you don't know who a real friend is, or something like that. Cool. All right, now, um, I've been doing this detox formula that um, I picked up at a health food, blah, blah. And what I found out is that um, it really gives me the runs, and I'm running around, you know, Beverly Hills uh, like a girl on her pin period menstruating or something. I have these crowns. You'd think I was a girl on her uh, her cycle, right? So, um, you know, Social Occupant Project is an anti-corruption human greed disabler where we give you access to your own management in your social alchemy, your change in society. And, you know, we're teaching that, hey, guys, it's not smart to bear back and treat one another like cum dumps and celebrating the non -conver pardon me, I had to put it in my denture so I can speak, the non-conventional, not too conservative day for all you convenient sluts. So, men, the problem is impulsiveness. Uh, and the reason why people go for impulsiveness uh, is because they figure that everybody lies to them anyways. And you know, they don't know who wants them for money. So, all the prudent men that are muscular or professional or what have you, that are not pissing away their lives because they're stuck up. They uh, think that they're better than the gay guys that are in the scene. It's very popular right now to find guys that are trying to meet other guys and they say, hey, I'm non-scene. We're two straight dudes and we want to just like hang out and be naked but it's platonic or something like that. But the whole thing is totally gay. Uh, you know, hook up or something like that. So, men are impulsive because they can. And they are so uh, defeated by uh, rich fag America and other gay men that have their educations, their looks, their money, and uh, of course, career. So when men are impulsive and they are pissing it away, they're doing it because they are angry at other gay men, particularly successful, beautiful, stuck-up men. Now, you might say these stuck-up men are all royalists and they're separatists and they're actually oppressors. They are, because they come in and get what they want and rob you of your innocence and then they leave and you never hear from them again. So, finding a friend will make it good, but if they're friends that now you have to earn uh, their friendship and they don't return your calls, that's not a real friend. And I have a handful of those coming from out of Santa Barbara and, of course, Beverly Hills and what have you. So now, when friends try to make you work for the friendship, all right, in a gay culture where you are already at odds and there's not really a lot of substantial and legitimate guys out there for you to date and the what? The pull for uh, 
guys and sending out the fish line to bring back a fish on a hook is very impossible because what the men they bear back they're cold-hearted and then they leave or they want your money or your bag of meth or what have you people want to party okay people want to escape you know the drill look at the life that we live nine to five so there's really no bang for your buck if you have to make somebody feel of value and worth it where you keep calling them back but they don't return your calls and they want to see how much you want them because they are creating you and shaping you based on what the rules and what they think works for them that's not friendship you know I've uh, <clears throat> you know, shared my expertise with you. And, you know, I'm not out to play, you know, sticky biscuits and running around as a nudist. Um, you know, I'll be as authentic as I need to be. And, you know, whether you accept me or you accept other people or people accept you or don't accept you, what I heard somebody say is that keep your expectations low. I think Mr. Marilyn said this. Uh, he's Jamaican-British. And uh, when I was living in San Luis Obispo as a gay militant activist producing Voice of Obispo, YouTube, um, he contacted me and he said that he wanted to get together, basically wanted to marry me. Mr. Marilyn is basically Boy George. If you want to know Boy George, you might love his music, you might respect his message that he's attuned to because of his shock rock or punk rock androgyny. Marilyn is like the equivalent. When, when Marilyn met Boy George years ago, Marilyn said to him, oh, it looks like you're stealing my style seems like you're using it for your career. Boy George is like, uh. So Marilyn is really up here, and Marilyn knows me, and I know him. And But this is what he says. He says that he keeps his expectations low, but he's big and high up on practicing gratitude. And that touches just a few things in your life that need to be ironed out and changed. When you can do that as a man, you're turning everything that you do into gold. However, okay, men don't know the fact that they don't have a clue on how to live life. And they don't know how to integrate their past and their future having to do with male sexuality and career and your rights relationship men really don't give a shit so as Marilyn states it does make a bit of sense and wise applied logic in the social sciences to go at this and make people laugh and turn towards your art. Now, I knew a drag queen, okay, and a drag queen had a urinal carton, you know, hanging on the side of his, her bed as a container to piss in because she was too much of a diva to get out of the bed to go empty her piss heart on. You know, in the morning, you guys, when you wake up, you have an erection or even in the middle of the night. Now, I'm not telling you to be that of yourself, okay? But pamper yourself, okay? I want you to know that when you start pampering yourself, regardless of people accepting or not accepting you in social alchemy, 
and they judge you and they try to control you and bully you and they lie to your face, your pampering is basically telling people you're not so much in control. You know, I wipe my own rear end. You don't do that. So opinions are like assholes. Everyone has one, as you've heard. So because this drag queen knew that people were insensitive and stupid when it comes to friendships, and there's no way to talk sense into somebody who's lying and they're used to getting ahead and getting what they want. Somehow people think that when they lie and cheat and they have a jealous spirit, good things are going to happen to them. It doesn't work that way. The Bible says that don't curse the sinner if God chooses to bless him. And that's referring to health, prosperity. Now, men don't want to know you are emotionally broken, emotionally challenged, afraid, lonely, pathetic, desperate, and in need for real love. Okay. Now, all those things are wonderful if you close it with saying that you need real love. Okay. But regardless, okay, despite that they don't accept you because you're an artist, okay, and you're clean from crystal meth and you're not using your drugs and you've sobered up and you've been in recovery and you've done a lot of the work on yourself like Marilyn has done and, um, those around him. You become discerning and you learn that you don't need to tell people so much because they are not really your friend. How in your mind, let's say you have five friends that you're thinking of, decipher which one is your friend. This is how you do it. You ask yourself, is this person I'm talking about the go-to person? Do I always go to them? And do they return my calls? And will they hang out once a week and talk on the phone as friends? If the answer is no, they might be a conditional friendship I've talked about in my other, other lectures. And they may only like you based on what you produce. And they're one of those friends that hang on to you and they come around every six months to a year and you're supposed to give them a progress report how great you are because they think they're going to make money off of you and you're going to move them to Malibu. There's people that really are that entitled that they will come in and they will want to know if there is a way that you can find for yourself that will get them ahead too. And they'll look at you right in your eyes like they're your business partner or they're your friend. Not even business partner, just a friendship out of love. And they turn on you because in life, we don't know what the future has to offer. So men say, hey, then I'm going to charge by the inch. I'm not going to be getting used by men. And they turn to a life of male hustling, escorting, callboy, ladyboy, houseboy wannabe, uh, ginger boy, twink, girly boy, sissy, fatale femme. We've discussed all of these stereotypes. If you cannot turn people's heads, that means men in the gay community, then you realize that you don't have what you take. So you continue to clean out your colon, so to speak, by doing what? Shitting on people. Because of what? You're angry. Now, there's a couple of things that you should not tolerate as a friend. Number one is a liar. You can't build a lasting foundation for that lifelong friendship if there's lying. Another one is if they don't provide self-disclosures, doesn't mean they're lying, but if they're not sharing a part of them when you've shared intimate pieces of the work that you've done in your soul. And another one is if they're jealous. Now, not everybody in the world has a Christian friend. This is a big American thing, though, having a Christian friend, knowing Christians, being a Christian. 
when these people don't return your phone calls, they're not really your friends, they're gay, they're straight, they know what you go through as a man coming out of the closet, right? Looking at social justice, prevalence and democracy promotion without force, looking at your greed and your corruption and your cock and your erections and cock and culture and becoming a masculine, a standing up for men and things like that. When you start doing that and you have friends that are not... Uh, respecting you and they're being nasty and real naughty, very bad, is because they expect for you to do one thing. Do what Jesus would do. And turn the other cheek and take the slap and the beating and be crucified and forgive. But yet there's no change on them on their side. Now these areas are really important when we're talking about men becoming men and no longer being boys. When you are a champion, okay, you are the what? It's in archetypes, it's in hero heroism, pardon me. Pardon my gingers, I can't speak. <laughs> there is the Iron Man in psychology. And it sounds like a deliberately pretentious word. More rhetoric, something to make you sound smart. But actually it's not. The term technically comes from out of sports. And the Ironman race is basically surf carnivals in an event involving a combination of swimming, running, and surf craft riding. Now when you are an Ironman, we're basically saying in technical sports and uh, physical sciences that you can endure anything, harsh weather, and you can play a myriad of roles, marathon, running, in your case, singing, acting, modeling, designing, landscaping appearances, decor, now, when you're an Iron Man, you occupy a position of track and field. This is all a metaphor. And anything that becomes a business problem, you have the ability to what? Stand up against it. Now, you can use a lyrical picture like I'm doing with this boa and do it with pleasure and success. You don't have to be one of the big boys that uh, tosses one another around through barebacking. The least of some of the things that you can even build a friendship on. So you men, MSM, men who have sex with men, and uh, transvestites and married men and bi curious men and single men and divorced men and gay men and confused men and asexual men and rich men and poor men and black men and white men and definitely hot Mexican men, men with muscles, men with all the tattoos in all the right places, men that are not street trash, so men that don't really have all that going for them in their sex appeals, but they are. Uh, business executive suits, political elite even, economics, real, real estate, uh, Wall Street, what have you. You don't have to settle for crummy friends. And that's a lot for somebody to chew off when they are what? needy, and scared. Now, we want to put this most formally. When it comes to you wondering what a friend is and you're confused and you don't know if you're coming or going, it's because there is a psychological... I gotta put dentures in my mouth so I can speak. There is a psychological 
of a problem arising in gender relations. A lot of this might be because you do have a cock and people think that they can, like they've done other men, tell you that you must be willing to be wrong. Okay, that's the thing that's going on right now in the, the women's movement for sexual assault recovery prevention and uh, men against domestic violence to stand by women. It's called the Me Too movement. And you men have to be willing to be wrong. Men, if you are willing to be wrong and you know other men are willing to be wrong, then you start with what? Holding them accountable and you've strengthened the sociology of masculinity, the social institution of masculinity, okay? The social psychology of being a man. And then you can go back to the woman and say, you know what, Mrs. And all your therapy and all your feminist and protest, do you have any women friends that you sit down and shoot the shit with like I do with my, my brother or my bromance? Your brother with a little bit of romance. And you let her know that we are willing to be right because we've been wrong for a long time, miss, and you're right, missus. And now, women, you need to be willing to be wrong. So when you flesh out these friendships that are just kind of hanging on you, that you think that are your friends, then they're really not. Get rid of them, and then it helps you sort through your mind and look at inquisition of the soul of man and why you're here. here. Pardon me. Dentures. <laughs> Now I can speak much better. And the, the self-absorption that people around you have, and you consider them your friends, you need to see through that real fast. And confront them, work through those feelings with them, and if they're not willing to uh, work with you, then, you know, Put your rhinestone band back on your head. I love you.